probably. Oh, is it live now? Oh. Do you want Do you want to be able to share your your screen? Uh, no. The, 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 I was just going to really talk and then kind of just have yeah. your screen up. Okay, so I'll just do only host for screen sharing. Uh, that should be fine. And then I'm going to make sure I scare, share the right screen. Okay, I am sharing. I uh, don't know if that automatically. Can you still see the pen? The, uh... Uh, yes. So I exited full screen. At least now I can see everything on your side plus the panelists. Uh, no attendees just yet. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make it's not sure whether it's actually broadcasting. I would imagine that when I share my screen, it automatically. Be... Yeah. Yes. And it looks like it's it recording. It says recording to the cloud. Oh, okay. Yeah. I also imagine that there may be a few people that may probably come like five minutes late. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So are you going to be handing out candy this year for Halloween? Uh, have there been any kind of rules and stuff set out? For you guys? Uh, yeah, they basically said the, uh, you know, obviously everybody's supposed to wear masks and all that kind of stuff. But um, other than that, it's really about the kids, you know, they can get candy and then they have to, they're supposed to, they're supposed to not touch the candy for like two days or something like that. That's what they oh said. Oh my God. Yeah, I know. I don't know how that's going to work, but. I think that's going to probably be a, we don't, we didn't last year, we didn't get too many kids. We're in a pretty new area. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so like, so we only got, I think maybe 10 kids last year. Oh, wow. This is my uh, first year in the new house and I'm oh, in yeah. a neighborhood that I'm honestly a block and a half away from an elementary school. So well, you should get lots of kids then. Hopefully, well, like, is it is it a new area or is it an established area? No, it's a, an established uh, okay. right. neighborhood. Yeah. So, so I, I used to live in, um, uh, in uh, across the river in Pitt Meadows. I had a house over there, and then then we moved, and um, my kids kept bugging me to go back, um, go back to Pitt Meadows to uh, to do the trick or treating because we had the best. It was a big, a, a big, big subdivision, right? And everybody had kids, so there was everybody was handing out candy, and they had people there that were handing out full size chocolate bars and oh, those that that's the best. Yeah, so so my kids always wanted to go back there, and then but it was just like I'm not driving all the way over there. I'm I'm you know I'm, <laughs> now I'm an hour away from there. I'm not driving an hour just so you can get extra candy. So. So anyways, you know, I, I grew up in a neighborhood just like that, where, you know, the kids would communicate. You're like, Oh, Mr. Harrison is handing out full candy bars this year. Like, yeah, yeah. Right? Like, oh yeah. You gotta, you got that. You always have that one or two kids that have got all the four one one on what's happening. Right. Like it's, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's big candy bars over there. Oh, you gotta go over to, you gotta go over to Grover street. There's a, there's a whole bunch of people handing out candy over there. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Uh, Oh, what happened there? Uh, we're getting pretty close. I don't know. I mean, some people might sign up and then forget about it. And yeah. I mean, I know Matt had a webinar a couple of weeks ago and he said there he only had nine people showed up. So. Oh. 
Yeah. Vault's a tricky one too, though. Yeah. Like even the times that I've had conversations about vaults or dealing with it, um, I feel like the they they go into the conversation already with their minds made up. Yeah. They hear about all the the bad things rather than kind of focusing on like what what makes it work. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's sort of what this is, I guess. More, it's like put aside your um, um, put aside your um, preconceptions about what you think Vault can't do, yes. and uh, focus on what it can do for you. Focus right? on what it can do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, and to be honest, some of our our government clients and stuff like that that are getting into it, and even you know utilities and stuff like that that have some security requirements that that the BIM three hundred and sixty cloud can't can't manage. Um, it's still kind of the the thing to do. I mean, I, I know Stefan's going to talk about um, uh, Meridian later in the in November, I think. Um, but the um, I think Vault is still the most cost effective and potentially secure solution at this point in time. Yeah, which is the funny thing. I I can't find the price list for uh, Accrued Meridian stuff in our price list. Yeah, I wonder, oh, somebody joined in. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's Andy. Uh, let's see. You can allow them to talk if you want. Oh, okay. Hello there. Hey, Andy, how's it going? Good, good, how are you? Good, good. How's your summer? Oh, it's been not too bad. Well, that's good. Busy. Oh yeah, it's been a really crazy summer. Yeah, yeah. We've been doing all sorts of things here. How's the how's the project coming coming along? The uh, sorry. How's the uh, the Twilliger project coming along? Uh, it's coming. There's there's all sorts of fun things that we're running into, but uh, we're sorting them out as we go kind of thing everything's been okay with the uh the bim 360 seat like uh no issues well there, there's been issues but it, it's it's working it's just okay. uh, certain functionality and stuff quite isn't oh. there yet but okay okay but collaborating with all the other other groups and stuff it kind of works at this point unfortunately i'm the only one who can print right now which is a little bit annoying but uh, it, it has to do with the the match lines um, so if we got match lines between different drawings so there you can set them up when you do your view frame groups in civil 30 and when you go from one to the next or whatever it's supposed to do the previous sheet and the next sheet and it kind of references those and it uses a sheet set to do it however um, with the collaboration for Civil 3D, um, those fields don't get filled out for the other guys. So, oh, okay. all the match lines just show up as X's for them. But did you did you get my email about the uh, infrastructure university? Uh, I don't know if I did. Oh, uh, let me let me see. I'll I'll, I'll resend that to you then. Um, it's yeah. there's going to be some. Uh, BIM stuff on there that might that kind of might help you. Um, we we obviously normally have the the normal uh, you know in person infrastructure uh, roadshow which would be around like October, but obviously we have to have it online now. So um, it will be kind of a full day event, but you can kind of pop in and pop out for certain sessions that uh, you know are more relevant to you. But there are some, some BIM components in there that uh, will definitely help as far as like some best practices. And stuff. Yeah. Well, I, I know AU is going is uh, online this year as well. Yeah, so yeah. There's a, yeah, no, there's there's probably definitely some sessions I'd be interested in, in checking Perfect. out. Perfect. Yep. I'll, I'll make sure to uh, resend you the uh, the link then. Yeah. Yeah, but I, you sent me this here because now I'm interested in uh, we're we're doing the move to SharePoint. Okay. Um, okay. The, our president. 
decides he wants everything off of our local servers here. He wants to get rid of all of our on-site servers. Oh, okay. So Sheldon made the decision to, to get rid of all the, the stuff on the server. Then. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just trying to sort out the issue of file locking with civil 3d. And from what I understand, vault is the, the vault integration with SharePoint is the way to go about doing something like that. So. Hi there, it's Jerry here. Um, I hadn't actually planned to talk too much about or anything about actually SharePoint, but if you're interested, we could set up a, a, a separate session and uh, we can go through that if you're interested. Yeah, I just, I have no idea what Vault really is. I've heard it, but. Okay. Actually, uh, you're, never... you're my, you're my, uh, my target audience because uh, this, this presentation is intended to be more about um, how to work with uh, document management with civil 3d and with vault um and so it, it i was wondering how many people were going to show up that were going to be uh new to vault and how many people were already users of vault just looking for some additional tips and tricks so uh this presentation is more for you to kind of look at what vault can do in the context of civil 3d um and then like i said we could set up a separate session for to do the the because uh, there's uh, also BIM 360 integration with Vault as well. So, um, sort of the key with um, uh, with Vault and those integrations uh, is that uh, Vault tends to be more well, not with SharePoint. With the advantage, of course, of Vault over SharePoint is the ability to work with um, CAD drawings uh, seamlessly and and references and and data shortcuts and that sort of thing. Um, but with uh, BIM 360, it's more about the security piece because the BIM 360 cloud is is American or European, but not Canadian. So we have a few of our our uh, government and utility customers that uh, look at Vault as a as a sort of repository for for documents where they have to have um, uh, Canadian hosted uh, cloud services. So. Yeah, that that is. Uh, we have some clients that do have that in their contracts as well. Yeah. That we we can't be hosting any drawings on servers that are located in the states or outside of Canada. So that's right. Yeah, Autodesk has has indicated that that they will be increasing the number. You know, the the locations, including Canada, potentially. I guess Toronto. I would imagine. Um, but I I I don't, I don't have a timeline on that. I don't have a roadmap for that. So I can't really yeah. speak to when that might happen. But. Well, and all the roadmaps have kind of gone out the window for everything right now. So, pretty much, <laughs> yeah. that is very true. Well, it looks like we're not getting too many attendees. Um, yeah, we've only got yourself and and Jerica. I'm going to let Jerica talk because she's been sitting there quietly. <laughs> yes. Hi, hi Jerica. Hi, morning, everyone, or good afternoon, wherever Jerica. you're from. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't have a, I mean, we've obviously got the time scheduled. I can, I can get started and, uh, go walk through this if you're interested, Andy, or if you want, we can set up a, uh, um, a custom one just for you. And I can, I can integrate some of that uh, SharePoint stuff. Maybe some of the stuff you're interested in. Yeah, that, that might be easier if, uh, cause I'm just looking for, essentially what vault is how it's used and and how it would work with sharepoint kind of well it's up to you i'm i'm willing to i can walk through this uh, presentation right now i I'm, i don't think it's worth kind of waiting too much longer um, yeah yeah um so i can walk through the presentation now and give you an idea about what sharepoint is in the context of civil 3d um and then uh, and then I can prepare and we can have a, a subsequent one and I can talk about SharePoint and, um, and BIM 360 integration if you want. Yeah. Yeah. That would be lovely. Yeah. Cause the, the BIM 360 thing, I'm not sure. Well, like it seems to be working the way it's, it's supposed to be working, yeah. but yeah, if we need to be hosting things for sure. Yeah. If you've got, if you've got a secure hosting uh, with, with vault, uh, but you want to be able to share that some things out, you can easily uh, uh, sort of push those those things out to the BIM 360 environment without having to kind of, you know, check out, download, 
and then and then check it back into BIM 360 kind of thing. You can do it directly from Vault. Uh, I'm not really set up to do that right now, so I, I would show you, but I yeah, can't no, right now. That, but, yeah, that, uh, that's fine. I think if we if we go through that at some other point in time, and you can show me the the BIM and the SharePoint kind sure. of side of things, that Sounds would be good. lovely. Okay, well, I'll walk through this quickly. Then you just let yeah, me know I'll if you, down. yeah, if you want to let me let me know. Uh, um, I think since we only have one person, you can interrupt me if you have questions at any point in time. We were going to do questions sort of at the end, but um, I feel free to ask questions if you have any. Um, first of all, can you see my uh, screen, the, uh, the yep. PowerPoint yep. presentation? Okay. So, okay, I got to actually, there we go. All right. So, what is Vault uh, and why are we using Vault with Civil 3D? Uh, the, the big thing, uh, I mean, it's, uh, you've talked about uh, the, uh, the BIM, or sorry, the BIM 360 environment, BIM 360 docs. Uh, Vault really is a uh, self-hosted uh, document management system that allows you to, uh, as I said, host anywhere you want. And uh, it gives you a lot of uh, capabilities for uh, you know, securing documents, for tracking documents, for managing documents. Um, the, the key thing, of course, with anything that is uh, document management over things like SharePoint is that, uh, you know, Vault and BIM 360, but uh, we're talking about Vault today, is that it, it allows you to maintain those relationships. So the, the file and data relationships uh, that are inherent with, particularly with, uh, you know, the, the more advanced uh, design software like Civil 3D and Inventor, uh, that sort of thing. It allows you to, uh, to, place those relation or set those relationships up in vault. And then those relationships um, are, are not are never broken. doesn't matter whether you move things around. Um, you, you don't have to go back and repath anything uh, inside the vault. It just, it, it just works again. And that goes for like things like data shortcuts, although they call them, they call them a, call it a, a civil 3d project in the vault environment. So, but it's really the same thing as data shortcuts. And um, I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but the, the, the key thing to keep in mind is that if you go into Vault and you move your, your sort of uh, parent drawing around, those relationships are maintained. And so you don't have to repath anything. You don't have to go back and find where those things are. It just updates it and it can do it for, you know, any number of documents. If you were to move 20 documents at a time, all those relationships would be maintained. Uh, you can also uh, very much like if uh, maintaining your data shortcuts and I should ask, uh, I'm assuming you are a fairly uh, uh, solid user of, of Civil 3D, is that's correct? And you're using all the functionality in Civil 3D? I wouldn't say all, but yeah, most of it. Okay, okay sounds good. So, so I'm just, I just want to make sure that, I, that the, some of the terms and terminology that I'm, uh, that oh, I'm absolutely, using yeah. are, are, are familiar to you. So, um, so uh, in the civil 3D world, just out of the box, you're familiar with the data shortcuts. Um, we're we're going to talk a little bit about moving those data shortcuts into uh, into the Vault environment, and we're going to look at how uh, you would use those data shortcuts inside of Vault as opposed to using them in uh, in the in the civil 3D uh, prospector environment. Now, it's very similar concept. I mean, if you if you maintain your data shortcuts on a on a network drive somewhere, for example. Uh, very similar uh, in nature, except that if you move things around with your data shortcuts, it can it can mess up the relationships, and that's what I talked about where you can maintain those relationships. Uh, some of the other things that are are um, uh, highly advantageous uh, with uh, Vault is that you have a really an unlimited number of custom properties you can assign to drawings or folders, uh, which is uh, improves your 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 searching capabilities, improves your uh, uh, sort of management of and understanding where that um, file draw, drawing is in, in a, say, for example, in a project environment, um, what uh, state it's in and that sort of thing. Uh, you can load all your legacy files easily into Vault. There's a, there's a utility. I'm not going to show it today, but um, just know that there's a utility out there that allows you to load all your drawings into, into Vault easily. And it also allows you to uh, fix your, your references so that they will work inside a vault without having to do anything in vault. Um, and fi finally, you can, you can sort of manage projects uh, inside a vault. That's not something that's super intuitive 
uh, when you first start working with Vault, but there are tools inside of Vault that make uh, managing projects, uh, particularly in that sort of civil construction uh, environment, uh, uh, a little bit more uh, seamless, a little bit more uh, uh, user-friendly, I guess, if you like. All right, so let's just talk a little bit more in detail about managing files. Uh, so as I mentioned, you have the ability to actually um, generate an unlimited number of, uh, of properties. And what a property is in, uh, in Vault, and I'm gonna show you, I don't have any files in here yet because that's part of the demonstration, but uh, I do have properties associated with this project folder. Um, and what a property really is, is just something that you set up and define that actually um, adds some more context to that object. And objects can be folders, they can be files. Um, if you're an inventor user, they can be parts and assemblies. But for our purposes, they're, oh, and I guess I should mention they can be a third of the, the data, uh, data relationship uh, files that, that also are maintained and managed in Vault. Uh, you can set these properties up. Uh, any way you like. There are sort of four different kinds of uh, properties you can create, text properties, um, and, uh, date properties, uh, and numeric uh, properties, and uh, date, text, numeric, and... Okay, now I'm drawing a blank right on the, off the top. I can show you quickly. are the property types. So text, I said, Boolean, of course, <laughs> yes, no properties. So uh, those are the types of properties you can do that just makes searching for items inside the vault a little bit more um, seamless, maybe a little bit easier to do, um, or a little bit more robust as well. Because if you have a lot of different um, uh, attributes about a, a file or a folder that you want to be able to search on, you can easily do that in Vault. And I will demo that a little bit later. All right, let's go back to... Let's go back to there. All right, um, so the other thing uh, that uh, uh, Vault has out of the box is uh, lifecycle management. Now, Vault has a pretty pretty decent lifecycle management for most purposes. Uh, you can also tie Vault into uh, into the Fusion environment, so you can actually have more uh, robust lifecycle management. But um, I'm going to demonstrate a little bit about lifecycles and how they work inside of Vault. Um, the big thing, the key thing about lifecycles uh, with most projects is that you can also tie in some automation to to lifecycles. So, for example, you, if you wanted to create, uh, if you were going from a work in progress state to a review state, and you wanted to create a PDF uh, on the fly, you can easily do that uh, uh, doing a using a lifecycle state change. Um, and so, whenever uh, uh, the state goes from work in progress to uh, that review process, then a PDF is created. As well, you can also uh, do other types of functions like uh, email. You can actually have it prompt the user to send an email uh, with the PDF as a link so that the user, the end user on the other end can uh, actually download that PDF directly from that email as opposed to having to go into the vault to do that. Okay. Uh, I, I mentioned uh, security framework. The reason why I mentioned that is we do have customers that actually um, require uh, a certain amount of additional security. One of the key things that we've done for some customers in the past is, uh, you know, uh, if, if you have users that are on a laptop, to ensure that there's uh, less chance of, of uh, files and folders being um, acquired by somebody other than they're intended for, uh, you, can, you can set your working environment. I guess I should mention that the reason why we're doing this is because you're working folders is where the files are uh, downloaded to when you're actually checking them out and working on them, but everything's worked on locally. But because of that, um, you know, if it's being stored in a, in a common location that's accessible to anybody that gets onto that laptop, it can be a little bit less secure, but you can set it up so that um, users, whenever they whenever they first log into Vault, it creates that working uh, folder structure in a secure location inside their profile uh, uh, directory, for example. Okay. Uh, the other key thing is sort of checking in and checking out. Um, and that's a, a very key concept in Vault. Uh, now you can do that through the Vault client. 
which I showed you just a second ago, you can also do the checking in and checking out directly through Civil 3D uh, using the add-in. And so that add-in just shows up inside of Vault, inside of uh, Civil 3D as the Vault tab. It allows you to log into the Vault. Um, it allows you to open drawings. So right now I don't have any drawings open because I don't have actually anything in that Vault yet. We're going to put something in there in a few minutes. Um, and it allows you to check it in uh, once, uh, or check it out uh, once it's in the vault. Okay, I suppose you don't have to have users that are just, um, you know, straight civil 3D users um, tend to be, um, uh, tend to be, um, want to work directly in civil 3D. They don't want to have to keep going uh, back and forth between, uh, you know, the civil 3D environment and the vault client environment, which is what I'm showing here. Uh, they prefer to actually just do most of their uh, of their uh, 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 integration with uh, with Vault through the Civil 3D environment. So that's what that um, that tab actually allows you to do. All right. So um, so checking and checking out, managing versions. That's another thing that we uh, uh, that we can talk about. Uh, you uh, files can have versions uh, associated with them, not just uh, versions, but also revisions. So a version is every time a, a drawing is checked in and then checked back, checked out and then checked back into the vault, a new version is created. And I'll show you that in a, in a couple minutes. Uh, I'm just going to quickly walk through these, these things here, and then I'll just show, quickly show you how you get, uh, how you check a drawing into the vault. Um, and then uh, you can preserve the references. I mentioned that earlier. So if you have XREFs or if you have data references inside of that um, uh, file, you can preserve those references uh, so that if you move those things around, uh, they don't become broken. And uh, you can actually, um, you know, it allows you to move those things around for different purposes. And so you don't actually have to go and re-attach re, uh, those references. All right, so let's just quickly, uh, in Civil 3D, oops. In Civil 3D here, uh, just make sure everybody can see. Uh, Steve, can you see uh, the uh, um, Civil There's 3D? There's no Civil 3D for me right now. There's it's no Civil the, Okay, yeah. let, let me just... Um, I have a why. question, um, Jerry. Yep. For like the versions, is can you sign like a set a time restriction? Like let's say if everybody gets off at six, that's the last version you can save in or is it like 24 7 if someone were to save a version at like 5 a.m and that's the newest version that's the newest version so the way that that works is that vault um i'm gonna have to stop screen sharing here for a second because i'm gonna have to reshare um because uh, I, I think what i did was i shared instead of sharing the window uh i need to share the window not the Oh, okay, so it doesn't, I don't, okay, anyways, uh, should be able to see uh, Civil 3D here now. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so the, um, um, the uh, way that versioning works, so ver there's, like I said, there's two things, there's versions and there's revisions. So a version, anytime a version is created, it, it, it always stacks it onto the top. So whenever you create a version, it becomes what's known as the tip version. And that tip version is what you're accessing if you just go and download the file um, without looking at any of the, uh, the version or revision history. Okay. Uh, however, having said that, if you make a mistake, if you, if, you, if you make an error um, when you're doing something in the file and it's a significant error that you want to just basically scrap that version, you can go to a previous version, check it out, and then check it back in again and that will now become the tip version. So that okay. becomes the most current version. So you can basically leapfrog versions over top of each other. If you, oh, if, okay. if you make an error like that, that's one of the things some of our customers are really like about Vault is that it allows you to actually recover from those kinds of errors quite quickly and easily. Yeah. Uh, uh, now that that's not to confuse a version with a revision. Yeah. A revision is something that happens through life cycle state change and that revision is typically a milestone version. So it's something that's been done that you want it to be now uh, locked in time. So where you can purge old versions, you can never purge revisions. Revisions are, 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 are in the vault forever. So anytime you go say from 
uh, from the review state to a issue for construction that might create a new revision and that revision now becomes a snapshot in time that's always going to be in the vault and that will have a specific set of properties associated with it that you can go back and find out okay what what did that revision mean without even having to open the drawing mm, okay gotcha okay all right, so first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna actually quickly um, open a drawing and then we're going to, uh, actually I'm gonna open two drawings because I have some other things I wanna, I wanna get onto as well. Um, so I'm gonna open a drawing and I'm gonna go find it here. Uh, so I have a couple of drawings here. I think these were the two that I wanted to do. Anybody that's done any of the tutorials in Civil 3D will recognize this, uh, uh, this surface here. Um, so right now, as I showed you, there was no, there is no, um, uh, there is no, there are no files in the vault. It's, it's just a blank vault with a bunch of folders. Now I want to get a drawing into the vault. Now there's more than one way to do that, uh, but I'm going to show you the, sort of uh, uh, one of the better ways to get Civil 3D drawings into vault. And that is to actually check them in from the from the source file, uh, where you can update, uh, you can um, um, you can actually um, um, add the files through something called the auto loader, which actually will allow you to add uh, a lot of files, um, and it also looks after the uh, the XREF relationships. It doesn't really handle sort of data shortcuts very well, so. Um, it's best if possible if you're starting a new uh, project uh, to, to sort of do uh, the transition to vault without doing a, a, a bulk data load with civil 3D projects. It's better to do them sort of on a project by project basis, which is what I always sort of recommend to our customers, if possible. Um, so the way that, the, that you check a drawing in is you can, in the prospector, anybody that's used Civil 3D will be familiar with the prospector on the left-hand side. Um, you can, once the drawing is open, uh, you can right click on here. Um, oh, you can check it in right here. And so what that does is, oh, actually I can't go there yet because we're in Civil 3D. Uh, I forgot, I gotta actually create a project uh, in Civil 3D. So there's a couple ways you can do that. Uh, one way is to just uh, create a new project. So down here, you'll see, if you've not worked in Vault before, you'll see this projects uh, node here in the prospector. That is uh, Vault projects, so Vault Civil 3D projects, uh, which is uh, sort of the same as your data shortcuts folder, uh, but in the Vault. Okay. Now, to create a new project, the 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 simplest way is to right click uh, and go New. And then you can select the folder in the vault you want to put it in. For our purposes, we're going to stick it in the 2020. Uh, we're going to stick it in this project and we're going to stick it under the reference uh, folder. And we're going to give it a name. And of course, I always recommend that you have some kind of naming convention for your projects. Don't just kind of name them ad hoc there. It's always better to have a naming convention because then it's easier to, to find them. The other thing about it is same as with, you know, uh, with the uh, data shortcuts, you can use a template. Um, I'm going to use a custom template that I have created just for this project. Oh, sorry, wrong one, this one. And I'm going to use this SolidCAD demo uh, template. And what that does is if I go back to the, um, if I go back to the, uh, I'm going to have to, if I go back to uh, the Vault client, now, and if I refresh, you'll see now that there's this sort of custom folder that looks, that's got this little icon here. And that's actually that Vault Civil 3D project. Okay. And inside of here, you'll see there's a, a Civil 3D data uh, folder, which is where all your Civil 3D objects will reside for uh, it's just like your data shortcuts. Okay. I've also in that in that uh, custom template, I've added some custom folder structure. So I have an alignment folder where I'm going to put all my alignment drawings, pipe folder for pipe drawings, surface folder for surface drawings. Uh, you can add whatever ever folders you want. You can have as many as you want, uh, but they will uh, they will reside inside of this uh, uh, Civil 3D folder. 
It should be noted that civil 3D drawings must sit inside of this civil 3D project. Uh, the reason why is because that's the only way you can have these, um, these data shortcuts working. Okay, so now that I've created that project, I'm gonna go back to civil 3D for a second. Uh, and I am going to go back to that. Hopefully you can see the civil 3D drawing again. Uh, so now that I'm in here, you'll see that uh, there's this projects uh, fold, uh, projects folder that shows up here and all those alignments and everything. So what I'm gonna do now just quickly is I'm gonna, I'm gonna check in this uh, check in this drawing and I can do that right from here. I don't, you know, there's very little that you need to do with the vault uh, ribbon uh, when you're working in Civil 3D. Most of what you can want to do is going to be available right from the prospector. So you can right click on the, uh, um, on the file and I can go check in. And now I actually have a project available to me that I can stick that um, into. And then I, I can tell it which folder I want to put it in. So in this particular case, I'm assuming this is a surface drawing. So I'm going to put it in the surfaces folder. And then I, I just, I can do a little check to make sure that everything that I want to uh, check in is, is associated here. You'll see that there's a, you know, there's an existing ground uh, point file. That's what I used to create that drawing. Maybe I don't want to put that in there so I can uncheck that. Um, because I don't want to, I just don't want to store the, the point file. It's, it's irrelevant to me now. So I'm, I'm just not going to store it. The set, next thing you can do is you can actually choose to store or not store the uh, surface. So I'm going to uh, choose to store it in there so that now it's available to anybody else that's in the vault. And I'm going to finish. takes a second or two to, to finish its thing. Now that I've done that, I can go in here. If I refresh this, may not even have to. I can go in here and if I refresh it, if I go under the surfaces, you can see now that that's, that berm surface is available to me. Okay. Oh, I checked it in. So I actually, I didn't, I didn't choose to uh, keep that other drawing checked out. So I'm actually uh, not, um, I'm gonna actually get rid of this. I'm not actually in that drawing I was just in. It looks like I am, but I'm not. Uh, so I'm actually gonna get rid of this. Um, and I'm gonna go delete. Yes. Okay, so now that I'm in this uh, 002, I was in 001 before, I should uh, make that clear. Um, now, if I wanna add uh, a, a um, that surface from 001 into this 002 drawing. Um, I can very easily do that by going down to the projects, find the surface that I want, right click on it and create reference. Takes a second or two. Okay, that reference didn't show up. Let me make sure that that's still in there. Am I in a, yeah. Okay, not sure why that's uh, not working. Let me just, oh, okay. I'm gonna go grab that source drawing again. Well, for some reason that uh, reference is broken right now. Uh, let me just open that drawing again from the vault. Just make sure that it's, there's nothing. Okay, so there's the drawing. Okay, I'm not gonna try and figure this out right now. I'm gonna uh, just uh, 
it was working when I try, I'll try it again on another drawing that I have so you can see how that works. Um, so let me just go and make this. Oh, I see what's happened. <laughs> That's why. For some reason, it is checked out. So I have to check it in. That's why it wasn't. I have to make sure this drawing, I don't need to do that. So we don't want it to be, have that. I don't know if you noticed that there was a little lock symbol beside that. I'm gonna go back to the vault here and I'm gonna refresh it, make sure it's not checked out. That's why I couldn't add it to the, uh, to the drawing. So if it was checked out, I'll just do that quickly so that you can see. If it's checked out, it'll either have, uh, have this dark blue highlighting or it will be gray with a line through it. So if dark blue highlighting means you have it checked out, the gray with the line through it means that somebody else has it checked out. So I'm gonna undo the checkout just to make sure it's not checked out because this should be working. And oops, yep, okay. So then we're gonna go back down here and try this again. I'm gonna try and create the reference. Interesting, it's not working. Um, okay, well, let's uh, move on from this and I'll come back and I'll, I'll demo that on a different drawing. Uh, for some reason that's not working right now. Um, so that's how you're supposed to be able to uh, put reference to, uh, uh, data references into, uh, into um, other drawings. Um, let me just see about checking this in. Maybe that's why, because I haven't checked this in yet. Maybe that's why. And we're gonna put this in surfaces as well. Yes, I think that's why I didn't actually check it in. Sorry about that. Nope, still not working. Anyways, uh, I'll come back to that. Uh, so the next thing we were gonna talk about is, um, I gotta go back to the, PowerPoint slide. So the next thing I'm uh, gonna talk about, um, uh, so talking about, so the, the other th way to get um, those uh, vault projects, the civil 3D projects in there, if you have a number of data shortcut folders already um, that you are maintaining in, um, um, in your environment, you can actually import those data shortcuts as a, as a vault project or as a vault civil 3D project. Uh, so the way you do that uh, very quickly, the one. So the way you do that is you go and find your, um, uh, wherever it is that you're maintaining your, uh, your um, data shortcut folder. And in this case, I've got, I've named that data shortcut folder uh, the same thing. Can you see the, uh, the uh, uh, Windows Explorer um, window right now with the, yep. it, oh, yep. okay, perfect. So uh, I've, I've named this, the, this data shortcut folder, the same thing as the civil uh, 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 3D project that I want to create. Uh, so you can go find that civil 3D project and I'm actually going to get rid of the other one because I'm going to, I'm going to create this one again. Uh, maybe I can get it to work better the next time. Uh, of course, it never fails when you're doing a, a demo that you, it never works the way you want it to. Uh, so now I have to go actually go and... Uh, yeah, this one here. Just give me a second here. I've got to clean something up here so that I can do this. Oh, I can't do that because I got it open. Bear with me two seconds. I need to shut that down. Okay. And I want to go back to 
Okay, so you can still see that C3D 101 correct? So now what I want to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to copy this um, uh, folder into the working folder uh, that I'm using for Vault. And the best way to do that is to go uh, back to the Vault client, find the working folder that you want, or the folder that you want to put it in. You just have to right click and go to working folder. And that will open up, and you probably can't see it because I'm not sharing it. So I have to share that now. So now you should be seeing a, a folder that has similar folder structure that I was showing before, but it doesn't have that. Uh, um, yeah, I see. I see that you actually are seeing that now. I'm going to copy that folder in there. So now I've I've copied that uh, data shortcut folder um, into um, into that into my working folder. Okay, and then all I have to do is go back to Civil 3D. And I can now um, go to the project. So I, actually, if I refresh this, I shouldn't see anything. So you can see there's no projects in there. Now I can just go to here and I can go uh, import from folder. Now you can, if you're, if you're um, sharing this with other Vault users for other organizations, you can actually create a zip file, same thing, just a zip file, and you can import from a zip file. But for the, our purposes today, we're just going to show importing from folder. And now I'm going to go find that folder. Um, uh, I happen to know it is, yeah, that one right there. I'm going to go find that folder. I'm not sure if you can see all these uh, uh, dialogues because they're, uh, okay, so I, I went and found that folder. You can see now it's actually working through the, uh, working through the process of importing that, uh, that uh, uh, data shortcut folder as a, um, um, as a, uh, a vault project. Now, if I go back here and refresh, I should see, there oh there it is so now you should see that civil 3d project here along with all of the um, uh, data that is associated with that um, um, with that data shortcuts all right so that's the that's the other way to get um, this these vault projects in here um, there is a way to, you can actually do this sort of in bulk. You could actually import a whole bunch at a time. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to do that, but it, it takes a little bit of scripting, but you can definitely uh, import uh, all of your data shortcut folders uh, that you're using into the vault environment. Um, the key thing to remember is if you want to import your data shortcuts um, into, um, into the vault maintaining the vault folder structure that you've created, you need to make sure that your data shortcuts folder is in the same uh, folder uh, structure so that it'll place it in the, right, in the right spot. Otherwise, if you just grab it from some random area, it will place all your data shortcut folders right underneath the project explorer node. Oh, sorry, I might, might not be sharing this. Uh, yeah, if you want it to, to land in here, uh, in this uh, references folder, for example, you have to maintain this folder structure. That's why I put it into the uh, into the um, um, the working folder first before I import it. Because uh, if you don't do that, it will just stick it right underneath this Project Explorer uh, folder, and you can't really move the, those folders afterwards. They don't it it will break some things, and so you need to make sure that you put it in the right spot to begin with. All right. Is there any questions about data shortcuts? Any questions about uh, these uh, sort of vault projects? Anything that you want to be able to do that you uh, maybe uh, didn't see here today? Uh, any questions about that? Sorry, I was just, I'm, I'm wondering the, the data shortcuts. So when you moved it over to, to vault there, you actually just went and copied the data shortcuts folder into the, the vaults folder structure? 
into the vault uh, work, what's called the working folder. So you gotta, you gotta yeah. be, be clear here. So the vault structure, folder structure on the vault, which is, can be anywhere in your organization. And then there's the working folder structure, which is in your, uh, your local environment. That working folder structure um, mirrors the structure on the vault uh, for the most part. Uh, and the easiest way to get to it, like I said, is if you right click, uh, can you see the, the vault client right now? Okay, good. The easiest way to do it is like to right click on the folder that you're interested in putting that in and go to working folder. And the reason why you have to do this is because if you don't, like I said, it will stick the uh, vault um, uh, civil 3d project that's got that name, it'll stick it right underneath this project explorer. Yeah, and, and it's, pops, it's almost exactly like data shortcuts. If it's too high or whatever, then you yeah. can't see nothing. Exactly. So it, it does work very much like data shortcuts. Um, okay. I'm all, almost identical. Um, um, except that now you, of course you can share this uh, a little bit more uh, and there's a little bit more security around it as well. Cause you can, you can apply folder level security to this. You can pl apply uh, life cycle state level yes. security to this. So there's a lot of ways you can lock these things down so that not everybody's, you know, playing around with your alignments and your surfaces and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm wondering too, what if, because uh, you said that if you're sharing it outside of the, the organization, you set up a zip folder. So then you would yep. just, you're passing the zip folder back and forth. You can do that. There's, there's, there's a bunch of ways you can do it. The only way that, the only reason why I would say the zip folder. So the, the, the sort of scenario that we see this happening is if you're working with a subcontractor and uh, that subcontractor also has a vault and wants to be able to work inside that vault for just to make sure that everything that they're doing is the same as what you're doing. Um, you can zip this up. Um, you can uh, zip the folder up um, and uh, send it off to them and then they can just put it into their vault. So, um, so it, if it, they that, were, a, yeah, I'm just wondering if, if you're, so if you're passing that around and, and let's say like they're, they're working on uh, some of the alignments and you're working on surfaces, yeah, is it going to kind of, overwrite when you okay. pull it in. So, so when you're working with disconnected vaults like that, what you, what you really have to do um, is you have to set up a life cycle environment where when you passing it off to somebody else, you actually lock it down internally so that nobody can edit it. And then that way, when it comes back, you put that file back into um, the working folder and then you just check it back in again. And then it becomes now part of back another version or revision of that uh, same file in your system. Okay, so, so you wanna make sure that the people aren't working on these on the data shortcut side of the vault simultaneously. If, if they're disconnected. Yeah, if, if you're, they're disconnected. If, yeah, if you're connected, you can be, but if you're disconnected, you, you, you need to have something in place where you can. The other way to do it is if you, if you get what's known as a vault office license, you can actually use the thin client let me see if I can uh, quickly do that for you. There's a thin client. Uh, well, I noticed there's upload to cloud drive here too and stuff like that. Oh, that's that upload to cloud is is uh, is a BIM 360 piece. I just okay. don't have I just don't have a BIM 360 license available to me right now. I just otherwise I could show that to you. But uh, this is you can download it from BIM 360 or upload it to BIM 360. Um, okay. So uh, that's basically the integration you want to talk about. There's a, there's a couple other little pieces um, when we, if I get it set up for our, our future demo, but um, um, that's really the, the piece there. You can go there and, and upload and download things from the, from the BIM environment and, and maintain the, the, the integrity and the properties uh, across the two environments as well. Uh, let me just see. I'm not sure why my, oh, there it is. Oh, it's really small over there. That's fine. Hang on one second here. I'm going to show you something. Uh, so this is a, uh, um, I'm going to. Uh, I'm still seeing just the client. Oh, right. I, I keep, so this, uh, this Zoom thing is really, uh, I'm not sure what to make of this because it's, uh, Kind of, I have to change the the sharing every time. Um, so let me just do this here. I got to find the. Uh, let me just get the. I think there's a way to just share the screen instead of having to. Flip That's what screen, I but... thought too, but I'm not seeing it. But uh, I guess I should have probably started doing this sooner so I could look that up. All right, let me just. 
do this. So, so that right now I'm, I'm logging in read only because I don't have a vault office license available to me, but this is a web-based client that you can actually, uh, if you don't have a vault office license, you can set this up so that uh, say contractors and stuff like that can go find their own drawings and you can just make those drawings or projects or whatever uh, available to those custom clients so that are, or contractors so they don't have to actually do a lot of searching. Uh, but, you, you can see that it basically mimics, oops. You can see it basically mimics the, uh, the uh, structure of the, uh, um, of the vault that you're using. And then I can just go in here and you can actually go and grab uh, the, the bits and pieces that you wanna be able to access in the per person. Oop, I don't, oh, I got rid of that, sorry. I got rid okay. of that, that drawing, but if there was a drawing yeah. in here, they could go find it here through the thin client. If you- yeah, I think that's very similar to how BIM operates. Yes, yeah, pretty much. But this is actually, you, you have to, you have to keep in mind that, that really um, uh, vault is a web application. Um, it, it has a web API that allows you, you can do some customization against it. You can create your own uh, custom um, uh, functionality that will allow you to do things with the drawings through, through a web interface. Right. So, this uh, that this uh, thin client is really using that. Now you can you can, if you have a Vault Office license, which is a separate license, um, it does allow you to actually check things in and out as well through this thin client. So you could actually have external folks using the thin client for checking things in and out. The only downside is um, if they're just using the thin client, they can't access the stuff directly through Civil 3D. This would be more for I guess for for uh, you know like a. a uh, engineering reviewer or a design reviewer, that kind of thing. Um, but uh, you can set that up so that you can do those sorts of things uh, through the, through the uh, thin client. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. I'm going to, uh, I pause sharing. I'm going to, Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to have to keep popping back and forth here. All right. So that's uh, that I'm going to go back to. That one, I guess. Uh, so let's log back in here. All right. So, okay, so that talks about data shortcuts and getting data shortcuts and that sort of thing back in and out. Um, now we're gonna talk a little bit about managing projects uh, in Vault. Um, one of the key things that, that Vault can do that is uh, a little bit more robust, a little bit more critical, uh, that allows, that's over sort of traditional file store based um, app, um, approaches is that you can actually set Vault up to manage projects, not just um, the project, but the the files within the project. And the, and the way that we kind of do that is through um, is through life cycles and through properties and categories. So, so it essentially at whatever life cycle you call it, it will zip everything up, kind of thing. So actually in, in reality, what you're doing is you're managing it inside the vault. If you want to distribute files for, for other reasons, there's a, there's a uh, pack and go uh, capability and I'll show you that in just a minute. Um, actually, I'm gonna need to, before I do this, I am going to need to check another file into the, into the uh, vault. This time I'm gonna go for something a little different. I'm gonna grab these two. Okay, so let's try checking this in. OK, 
Okay, so that checks that in. You'll notice that now there should be a surface in here. Oh, I gotta refresh it. That, oh, I didn't check. Okay, let me check that in again. Maybe I didn't do that, did I? Looks like I didn't add that surface when I did that last time. Okay. Oh yeah, it's in there actually. I didn't need to refresh it. Okay, so now you can see I've added that surface uh, and then I can go over here and I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna- I can't, uh, I'm still looking oh. at the client. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Let me just go back. Uh, the just go back to you say there's there's this I just I just checked this drawing in here. Can you see you can see civil 3D now? So I checked that drawing yeah. in and the surface that's in that drawing uh, right there is now in there. Uh, now I'm gonna go over here. This one actually has uh, a reference in it to that other um, to that other surface, which I'm gonna actually get rid of. Uh, oh, it's not going to let me do that. So I'm going to have to repair it first. Uh, no. I think you, you can, you might be able to select it I'm and then delete it. Actually have to. Ooh, maybe yeah, not. I, yeah, no, it's not. It's uh, so I think it was out of that one. I'll just try that. Okay. That's just the old. Okay. So now I'm going to get rid of it because I, I don't want to have that. Uh, uh, where is it? Delete. There it is. Okay. So I'm getting rid of that. So, um, I've got, I had created this alignment in here, uh, previously. Um, now I'm going to try and create a reference to this surface. I'm not sure why that's not working the, for me right now. Um, used to be with you with data shortcuts, you could just drag them and drop them, but you can't, uh, it's not working for me. Anyways, so I'm going to check this in. Oh, I, that, I thought that might have been there. Oh, let me. Okay. Let's just close this for a second. We're going to reopen it. Now let's try checking it in. Nope. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save it as a different name, save it in a different spot. So when you open the file, just the way you're opening them, is that actually checking them out as well? No. Uh, so I'm just opening them from a, from a location uh, on my, uh, this is before they're actually what's called vaulted. I'm just, okay. uh, so I, that's why it wasn't, it was giving me some grief is because I had it, they were still, this drawing from the testing I was doing yesterday was still uh, associated with the uh, um, the project, so I had to deassociate it. Now I can actually should be able to check this in now with the alignment. You can see it good, and it it's always a good idea to go through here and check to see what it is you're actually checking in. Um, and then I also want to check in that alignment, so that I've got that in the vault that people can use. Okay, so that's now been vaulted. So. Yeah. 
not sure why that's not working on my machine right now. It's just not allowing me to put those references in right now for some reason. But that's basically the way you do it. And then what you saw before with that with that uh, surface in there, that's what you would get. You would have that surface referenced into the drawing, just like you do with data references. Um, so um, I'm I mean, wondering if if maybe there's like with data shortcuts, you need to associate drawing to current. Yeah, no, you're not, you should, you're not supposed to have to do that. Yeah, you're supposed to associate the drawing to the to the project, but that happens when you check it in. Um, oh, okay. So that shouldn't be the case. I'm just going to just check out something here quickly uh, with that surface. Uh, just make sure. I'm going to try checking that out and just see if that actually is causing the issue. But I don't want to try and fix my issues uh, while we're doing this demo. Uh, you, you'll have to sort of take my word for it. It was working when you saw that uh, that um, um, surface around the outside of this uh, alignment. Uh, that's how that got in there in the first place is, was by just uh, creating the reference. So I'm not sure why that's not working right now. But uh, when we go to do the uh, the uh, additional uh, demonstration, I will. Uh, um, I will get that working and we can demo that for you for sure. So you can see how that works. Yeah, All right. No, I think I have a pretty good handle yeah, on how it yeah. would work, but yeah, it's, it's the same as data shortcuts. Basically with data shortcuts, you can actually just, you know, drag and drop. You can take that and you can just drag, oops, kind of grab it first and you can take it and just drop it in there. But with, uh, um, this drawing is not associated with that, uh, with that data shortcut folder, but, um, but with, um, um, with these ones, you just right click on them and go uh, create reference in whatever drawing. I wonder if I, what happens if I do it in a blank drawing? Maybe that's a better way to do this. Maybe it's. I was just wondering, Arthur or Nancy, do you happen to have any questions as well? Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Are there other, other people on there? Uh, yes. Uh, so Nancy or Arthur, if you have any other questions, you can put it into the chat box or I've given you the ability to unmute yourself. All right. So what we're going to talk about next. Oh, yes. So now, now that we've got a drawing in here, um, actually, I should have two drawings in there, right? I've got an alignment drawing. Yeah. And I've got a Oops, no, where was it? Surfaces, surface drawing, perfect. Okay, so one of the things with, uh, with um, uh, Vault that um, allows you to sort of manage your drawings, not just your drawings, but also your projects, um, is the, um, uh, the concept of categories and life cycles. So I've created a couple of custom categories. Uh, one, is called, uh, one is called environmental, and then the other one is called construction. And those are just irrelevant what they are. Just to note that when those drawings were checked in, I set up a rule that automatically put anything with the word align in it into the construction. Uh, and you can make whatever rule you want. And there, you can have multiple uh, uh, variants inside that rule. Um, so... In this particular case, anything with the word align in it went into the construction and anything with the word surface in it went into environmental. Um, so what that does is it actually allows you to put um, drawings into a category that has its own life cycle and you can have different life cycles for different categories or you can have the same life cycle for multiple categories. It really doesn't matter. It also has a set of properties that are associated with that, with that category. So um, in this particular case, we, um, I've not got any custom properties in here, but if you look at this folder, I've created- oh, We're looking at Civil 3D. Oh, again, got it. Thank you for, uh, for keeping me. Uh, so I should go back again and say, okay, so let's, let me show you that again. So if you can see that this category here is for construction and this one is for environmental. And like I said, if it's got, if it had surface in the name, I put it in environmental. If it had a line in the name, I put it into construction. So I didn't have to do that manually. I didn't have to go in and categorize these uh, things manually. Um, and if you look at the way that the category is set up, Uh, categories, 
nope, sorry, behaviors, categories. If you look at the way the category is set up under rules, sorry, uh, under rules, under the uh, construction um, uh, category, if the file name contains a line, it goes in there. And under environmental, if the file name contains surface, it goes in there. And you, like I said, you can see, you can use any property. Um, you can use any part of file name. You can use anything you want and it will automatically put, uh, put uh, it into the right category. What the categories do provide you, like I said, is for construction, I've got, I got a, a life cycle called, I'm just using the basic release process, which is an out of the box life cycle, but you can create your own life cycles that do whatever it is you want them to do. Um, I could use a revision uh, scheme. So in other words, when, uh, uh, when, if I set this life cycle up to change the revision uh, number uh, at a particular state change, um, I would assign this revision scheme to it so that it would use that scheme. And those schemes can be uh, alphanumeric. So you can have like 1.a or you can have 1.a.a or you can have 1.1 or a.1, however you want to set up your revisioning. Uh, for your drawings, and it would automatically do that at different um, points in the life cycle. So if you wanted to go from review to uh, issue for construction, and that was a, 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 a um, primary revision bump, so that would be your, if it was uh, 1.c, it would go to 2, and then when it goes back into WIP, it would go to 2.a say, for example, so that there's, there's, um, um, you're, you're following through that revision history. And you can add any custom properties uh, that you want uh, to that, uh, uh, to that, uh, um, right, as you can see, I don't have any right now. Uh, just maybe to a little bit more so you can see how that works. If I go to the folder categories, you can see under project, I've added uh, some custom properties to this folder. Uh, I've added the project completion date, the project name, the project number, project start, um, and um, a description and the manager. And so those properties will follow that category along. So if you go, get out of here uh, and go to the project folder, you can see that I've got those user defined properties associated with that, um, with that folder. All right. Uh, so the other thing that I've also done with that folder category is I've assigned a project uh, lifecycle. So right now, if I look at this, if I look at this folder, uh, I, sorry, I need to look at that. So if I look at this folder here, which is the one I'm talking about right now, I've got it in a state called InDesign, which is the same as I guess work in progress. And then I've got this other folder down here, 101.0065 is in submitted for bid. So this is just the way you can actually track your project through its, and you can create your own life cycle. So if you, if you wanted your life cycle to be um, uh, one um, uh, in progress uh, for review and closed, let's say, for example, you can create a life cycle that has just those states uh, and you can set up any rules you want for how it can move through that life cycle. So if you want it to actually go from, um, uh, say, for example, uh, work uh, in progress, and you only want that work, uh, that in progress state to be able to transition to the review state, you don't want it to be able to go directly to the closed, then you can set that rule up so that it can only move there. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So if I go to the change state, uh, can you see that change state uh, dialog right now? Yep. Okay. So if I was to, I'm not gonna, sorry. Um, Oh, hang on, I'm not in the right, I'm not gonna go to this one. Go to change state, there we go. So you can see it's in this flexible pr uh, project process uh, and it's in design. If I, right now in, in this particular case, you can move to any state you want, but you can limit it so that in the, from this, um, from this uh, state, the only place I can go is to this internal review, okay? So then I could change that state and then it becomes uh, internal review. Now, not only does it do that, but it also in this state uh, property, you can see it updates the state property so you can easily track that, okay? Now, the other thing about tracking projects in, in Vault uh, that's uh, fairly handy um, is the concept of a dashboard. Now, what, what Vault actually does allow you to do is it allows you to do reporting on, on pretty much anything. So if I select this uh, project folder, 
and hit the report button, I can select a, a report and I can run that report. And so this is the dashboard report. And as you can see, um, you can, and there, all of these reports are out, out of the box are, are standard. Uh, but if you have any, somebody that has some uh, Visual Studio experience, um, or if you wanted to hire somebody to do this, you can create your own custom reports. In this particular case, I added our uh, logo in here and I added the ability to put the, the project number and the project uh, name in here. Uh, but as you can see, what this does is it allows you to take a look at, okay, what have I got? What, uh, what is the status of my project and where are things in that side of that project? So um, I have, it, it gives me a breakdown of, of the different items inside of that project, but it also gives me, I'm hoping you can see this. Can you see this report? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, it also gives me the ability to see, okay, I've got, I, in this particular case, you know, I've got, um, I got one drawing that's in, uh, in construction, uh, it, that's in work in progress. Uh, and I got one drawing that's in environmental that's in work in progress. If I had them in other uh, states, if I had those drawings in other states, um, let me just uh, see if I can do that. Uh, I can show you that just so you can see. Let's just say, uh, go to the surfaces and I wanna, I'm gonna undo the checkout. And I'm gonna change the state and I'm gonna change this into it's a, for review. Now, if I was to rerun that report, now you can see that I've got, obviously I've got some other, uh, other uh, uh, supplementary um, files in there, but now I've got a, I've got a drawing now that's in uh, for review. And, and this would increase to, to cover all that. Now, if I want more detail on that, I can just scroll down and I get detail on every, all of the drawings are, and all of the uh, files that are in, uh, in that uh, project folder and what state they're in. Um, so this, this can be a, a handy, uh, a useful tool for a project manager or a supervisor that's, that's managing the design project. Um, and it allows you to, you can also, you can export this out as an Excel file. You can also export it out as a, as a PDF or a Word document for a distribution with uh, other folks in, in your uh, environment. All right. Uh, so that's sort of uh, some of the things around, pro uh, um, around projects, around, uh, um, uh, you know, sort of uh, managing projects inside of the vault. Um, the next thing I guess we can talk about quickly is about uh, searching, a um, little bit more about advanced searching and how you can actually find uh, files and folders in, uh, inside your uh, inside the projects in a little bit uh, more intelligent way. Oh, sorry, you're not looking at the. No, you should be. Uh, so we're going to look at the at the uh, find functionality inside of Vault. Uh, keeping in mind one of the big advantages of, of Vault um, that is not sort of inherent in other uh, sort of file management systems is you can actually search inside of any file that it supports. So all drawing files uh, can you can search for content inside of those those files. Uh, so if you have, say, for example. If you have annotation or if you have attributed blocks or anything like that that you've got inside those drawings, it will look inside the drawing to find that when you're doing the search, uh, depending on uh, how you're doing the search. In addition, it also looks at all of those custom properties that we talked about. It looks at those properties as well. So if you're maintaining the properties and you're enforcing property management, so in other words, uh, inside of those uh, life cycles, you can actually uh, lock it down so that certain properties have to be filled in before you can change the state, the lifecycle state, which will in, then enforce people to actually uh, update those properties so that when uh, you're doing those searches, uh, you can actually find the stuff you're looking for. All right, so I'm going to go back to... Um, back to here, and I got to... Oops. Something happened. Uh, I have to re 
start screen sharing again my screen oh because i closed that all right that's why okay there we go all right so you should be seeing the uh, the vault client again so now if I want to do some searching, if I want to search in all of these projects and find some files, now you have to remember, I've only got a couple of files in here and a couple of folders, so it's not that big a deal. But um, if I wanted to, if I had thousands of files in here, it might be a little bit more tricky, uh, particularly if you don't remember which project of particular file, you, you know, you knew that you did a, something on a particular project, but you couldn't remember what project that was. Um, or you couldn't, didn't have the reference to what project that was. There's a couple of ways to do the searching. You can just do a, a like an open search. This is kind of like a Google search. It basically searches on, uh, on all the file names as well as all the properties. So it's not sort of a structured search. It just searches on everything. So you can start typing in things like, well, same as in, you can just, you can find all the drawings that are sitting inside of here by doing that star.dwg. Um, if I know that, uh, let's just go, uh, I, this folder actually has, uh, my name on it as the, as the manager. Uh, so I just did a search on Jerry and that, and it came up with that here. So that that's looking inside a property. The other one is, lo is looking at a, at the file name, right? So that, that's just a very basic searching. You're probably used to that in, 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 uh, in the windows environment as well. Uh, the one thing you can do with this, sorry, wrong button, you can actually add, uh, lock it down to specific, um, um, to, to specific uh, uh, properties. So if I wanted to just quickly search on, uh, let's say, uh, let's do project, oops, not that one, project number is easier to, I just wanted to look at project number. Uh, there it is. Um, I could type in the project number here and go, um, what was it, 101 dash. Sorry, uh, my fingers are not working well today. Uh, 10105. So now I'm looking for all the drawings inside that project. So when I do the search, didn't oh because I'm not looking search subfolders yeah see here's that search file content if you turn that on not sure why that didn't uh, come up for project number do I not have the right project number oh because I don't have the project number associated with that drawing sorry um, so I can't let me just get rid of this for a second then you can do that search and you can find that project number because that that folder has the project number if I had that project number associated with the um, with that particular drawing, which I don't, you can see, I don't have that um, uh, user defined property here, but if I did and I had that project number on there, um, then it would have found that drawing as well. All right, uh, so that's sort of the basic searching. Now the, 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 the more robust searching that can happen with Vault, and I'm hoping you can see this. Can you see this, uh, this find dialog? Okay, so in this one here, you can actually have multi-criteria uh, searches. So if I wanted to find, for example, uh, let me just go. I want to find checked out. This is one of the uh, one of the uh, properties that, uh, or one of the searches that we uh, always um, um, uh, let me just uh, say today. So if I want to find out all, I find all the drawings that were. Um, uh, checked out today. I can do a find and I'll find all, all these things. So they were checked out at some point in time today, the, all of these, all of these drawings. Okay. Now the other really sort of um, important thing about this, and this is sort of what we, uh, what we recommend for all of our customers is you this kind of thing. So for a, for a uh, project manager or for a vault manager, uh, one uh, or vault administrator, one of the critical things is understanding uh, which files are currently checked out so that they can sort of manage and mo monitor and manage that. Uh, that can be important whenever, say for example, a particular uh, staff member, you know they're gonna go on holidays on Friday. Uh, Friday afternoon, you can do a search and do checked out or you can do a checked out by that person. Um, and that will, uh, that will then give you the, um, um, 
all of the files that are checked out by that person. And then you can sort of give them a gentle reminder to check those files in before they go because they're going on holidays and somebody else might need to work on those. Um, it's also a, a key if you do that checked out by um, and you use your own name for those people you working inside the vault so that they can know on Friday, I've got these files checked out. I need to check them back in again. And the key thing about that is you don't have to redo this every time. You can actually save this as a, uh, what's called a search folder. So when I save that and I close this and I go down here to uh, my search folders, I'm going to just close that up so you can see that. So uh, yeah, you can see the, the, the vault client still. Yeah. Yes. Click on checked out and there's a list of all those folders that are checked out. Like I said, if you wanted to use that as checked out by, you could use that one as well. And that's how you're going to uh, manage those checked out documents. So if they're, um, if they're checked out um, to you, uh, then you can go and check them back in again. And if they're checked out to others and you're the vault or project manager or the vault administrator, uh, then you can go and remind that person to check those back in again. So that's sort of how that advanced searching uh, works. So we don't really have time to go into it in, in huge detail, uh, but that's really uh, the, the way that that works. Um, I see we're getting, we've gone over time. I think uh, we kind of kind of got a late start. So uh, um, I'm okay to keep going a little bit. I, I think I have one more thing I wanted to go over just as bas basically just about sort of automation. But um, if, if people have sort of time constraints, I can, I can cut it off here or we can keep going, whatever you want to do. Uh, Nancy, Andy. Um... I'm good to go. Okay. Me. Okay. If you want to keep going, I can keep going. I can show you. I, I really only have, I think I have one more thing I just wanted to show you about uh, uh, some of the sort of ad, uh, um, sort of automated things you can do and some of the ways you can actually increase the functionality of a vault. Uh, I'm not going to really show you a whole lot of detail about it, but I'm just going to kind of quickly go through it and show you what it does. So I can probably, um, I, I can probably get this complete by the end of the, by the bottom of the hour. So if that works for everybody, I'll just carry on then. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So let me just go back here and um, talked about that. And so uh, let me just, let me just go back. All right. Oops, I went to the. So, there's a, a couple of ways, a couple of things you can do to kind of automate um, some of the things in, in Vault. I've mentioning here the command line server console, which I'll qu quickly show you how that works. Uh, the other way is through what's known as the job processor, and so the job processor is just a uh, another little application that runs on a it actually runs on a another machine. It has to be a desktop machine. And that job processor uh, allows you to um, do two things. It does one, it allows you to take uh, processes that would normally run on the user's machine and push it off to that server so that it's not taking up uh, resources on that machine and so that it actually they actually typically work a lot quicker uh, for certain things like if you're automating the process of moving files after something happens to it or if you're doing something where you're generating pdfs for example uh, which can take maybe a little bit of time um, it will actually uh, and updating properties and that sort of thing uh, that can take time if it's happening off the user's machine you're just pushing that off onto the uh, onto the vault uh, server well actually onto the secondary s uh, server that sort of uh, job processor uh, machine the other thing that it allows you to do uh, if you have somebody with programming capabilities or if you wanted to uh, hire somebody to do that you can actually automate some other things as well so for example if you wanted to um, automate the process of creating every time you create a project uh, because you can actually create templates for the project, but you cannot template those vault, um, those civil 3D projects. They just, it just does not work. But because the job processor can tie into the, any of the APIs that Autodesk has, you can have civil 3D running on that machine and it could automate the process of creating those vault projects for you. So when, when, you, when you do a, 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 the process of 
of copying uh, the structure of the template in place, the job processor would then pick that up and it would run and it would actually create that civil 3D project inside a vault inside the right location on that, uh, in that uh, project folder. So those are some of the things that you can do uh, in the job queue. The other thing that the, that the job processor does is it allows you to access a job queue. Um, I don't have any jobs running, so I can't really show it to you, but it has a job queue, which um, a, a vault administrators can go in and have a look and see um, how, uh, how busy their vault server is, which can give them some um, ideas for how to sort of uh, maximize uh, the efficiency of it and they can take a look at where things are getting hung up and it's just another analytical tool for for administrators and IT folks to understand um, how much pressure that the the current design environment is putting on their vault server. Uh, so there's a few things that the vault uh, uh, the job processor can do um, and uh, you know one of the, key, uh, the the really the two key ones are uh, things like creating PDFs, sending emails uh, whenever a lifecycle state changes uh, and the other one is any time you want to sort of customize uh, the uh, uh, customize something that you can do within a, a particular application like Civil 3. So for example, creating that uh, those uh, projects inside of Vault, uh, uh, the Civil 3D Vault projects inside of the Vault um, as the projects are being created. So that's all I'm really going to say about the job processor. Uh, the other thing to, to, that uh, for administrators and uh, for, um, uh, for managers that can be very important uh, is the concept of, um, of the sort of the, uh, uh, the, the uh, command line console uh, that uh, um, Vault comes bundled with. So there's a few things that uh, we typically do for our customers and set up for our customers uh, whenever they um, um, whenever they uh, get a vault implementation. Uh, so there's a concept that's known uh, workspace sync. And so what that is, as you're working through the vault, um, let me just go back to the vault here for a second. As you're working through the vault uh, process, the design process in vault, um, every time you uh, every time you check out a drawing, or sorry, I shouldn't say I, I should take a step back here. Every time you get a drawing, so there's two concepts. There's a checkout we talked about. That doesn't automatically bring the drawing uh, to your uh, uh, local machine. Uh, what, uh, um, what it does is it just basically reserves that drawing for you. If you do a get at the same time, so if I was to right click on this and do uh, checkout, um, Okay, where did that go? I think I lost the, uh, hang on. Okay. Uh, not sure why that's not working right now, but anyways, uh, the other way to, uh, when you're doing a drawing, you can either open the drawing in the application itself, um, or you can do what's known as a get, which will just bring that drawing local. If you do that open, it does two things. It brings the drawing local and then, it also checks that drawing out uh, so that you can actually have it reserved so nobody else will be editing that while you're editing it. All right, so those are the two, two ways that um, uh, uh, you can get that drawing local. Now, every time you check it back in again, if, if a user forgets to uh, check the little box that says uh, remove drawings from the local uh, working directory, uh, then those drawings can sort of build up on their workspace in the local workspace. Uh, so that can bung up their machine. It can just it just makes things sort of messy inside that workspace. So in the in the Vault client itself, there's this workspace sync, uh, which is sort of a it's a manual thing. The person has to actually click on that, and that will uh, do a couple of things. It updates properties, uh, and it also cleans up your workspace. Now, if you do it that way, you're relying on uh, a user to remember to do that on a regular basis. So what you can do is you can create a batch file that links into this connectivity workspace sync uh, executable that is installed every time you install the vault client on a, uh, on a machine. And then it, it, you set up this workspace sync configuration file. Uh, and I'll show you what that looks like. It looks like this, which is basically just telling you what you want it to do. Do you want it to remove all files? How, how many versions do you want to remove? Uh, do you want it to remove release drawings? All those kinds of things, what you want it to do. 
uh, it just basically tells it what you want it to do. And then you can run this, um, this batch file on a, a scheduled uh, window scheduled task. And it will just do this, run this, if you wanted to run it once a week, once a month, however you, often you want to run it. It will keep your users' machines clean and up to date so that they will have, all, if, if they have a drawing on their local uh, machine uh, that, they, that they sort of wanted to keep to, based on those rule sets, it will make sure that they've got the most recent up-to-date version of that uh, on their machine. So it does two things. It keeps you up-to-date and it also keeps your, your workspace uh, clean and uh, it doesn't get too too overfilled, okay? Uh, the other thing that you can do uh, and that we oftentimes do, if you look at the way Vault handles backups, you can schedule backups, but basically you can only schedule one, um, um, you can schedule one um, uh, sort of full backup and one incremental backup. Now, if you wanted to have special backups or if you wanted to do it on a different type of schedule, uh, or you wanted, for example, if you wanted to have uh, the incremental backup going to one uh, NAS drive and the full backup going to another one, uh, which I actually ran into just recently, um, you can actually do that. You can't do that with, with the uh, onboard uh, backup mechanism inside of the Vault server, but you can do that with the, uh, the console. So you would basically set up a file that looks something like this uh, that actually allows you to back up. Uh, this one here is the full backup uh, and it allows you to actually go and back the files up. It allows you to go and purge um, purge uh, old backups like the logs and, and um, it also allows you to create custom locations for your backups and for your logs. So if you have some special um, um, requirements, the other thing too is uh, we actually have a, um, we have a, a customer that uh, needs to back up incrementally every hour, believe it or not. And so uh, you can do that this way. You cannot do that with the out of the box um, uh, backup mechanism. So uh, this is just another way to, to do that. There's a bunch of other things you can do uh, with, uh, uh, with, the, um, with the console, but these are kind of the two main things that we, uh, that we run into that people uh, want to be able to do. So that's my two cents sort of on the uh, customization piece. And I think that's really the last thing I had to talk about. Perfect. All right. Um, if there are no other questions, um, Andy, Nancy, if there are any, just let me know. Uh, but if not, we can kind of just end it here. Uh, also, Andy, I'll, I'll, I'll be sending you the, the information um, about the infrastructure university, as well as kind of uh, <clears throat> to set up another date for a more customized uh, demo, uh, incorporating the, the BIM stuff that we were talking about before. Perfect, thank you. Perfect. Um, all right, so uh, I appreciate everyone joining in on today's webinar. Um, if you do have any other questions regarding anything regarding Civil 3D or even Vault, uh, feel free to reach out to myself um, and uh, I'll get you in connection with Jerry and we'll, we'll go from there. All right. Perfect. Thanks, Jerry. I can't. No problem. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. Thank you. Take care. Talk to you Bye. later. Bye. Bye now.